Hey, welcome back to the Disney Plus Everyday Challenge. And today we have Dan in real life. This is <laughs> it's from 2007. It is an hour and 39 minutes long and I have a cold. So you can probably wonder why, if you've seen my videos before, well, this isn't the worst I've sounded. I had COVID a number of years ago and I still performed with my voice nearly completely gone. And I still did the episodes. Go back to uh, 21 spring of 21 february it was not pretty anyway uh i had to do a southern accent just to talk that doesn't make any sense but it helped i don't know anyway this is a uh, steve carell starring film this is i don't know if this is his technically first lead uh kind of romantic comedy film he is already two years into the office at this point so he was a major name once the Office uh, became the phenomena it was. And I don't know if it was a phenomena right off the bat. I can't remember. But it definitely, obviously, if you've watched The Office, uh, the American version, you definitely know uh, Steve Carell from that, if anything, either that or The Daily Show or maybe Anchorman. Uh, but he's, yeah, he's done plenty of comedies and he's done some dramas, Little Miss Sunshine and things like that, usually ensembles. But this is fully, he is the lead in this. And uh, he is an advice columnist. In a, for a newspaper, which is, I don't know if that's something that would even exist today, technically. I don't, does it, do they exist? I imagine they maybe exist online, but I don't know, there's people who still buy newspapers, I guess, but for advice, I have no idea. They just do bad Google searches that uh, lead them down a rabbit hole towards conspiracy theories. And nobody needs that. Uh, but in this case, he's a, a, he's a widower as well. He's raising three young girls, the oldest of which I think is 17, played by Alison Pill. Uh, you might know her from Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. She was recently on the first two seasons of Star Trek Picard, and she's done a ton of other stuff. But yeah, here she's still a teenager. It's 2007. And uh, so yeah, she's this is three years away from uh, Scott Pilgrim. Yeah. So uh, of her three, he has three daughters, all at different stages of... Uh, Con connecting with him poorly, let's just say. One always wants to drive the car. One is hopelessly in love with her boyfriend. And dad's not having any of that. And the little one, daddy can do no wrong for the most part. And uh, But she is the sweetest of all and easiest to disappoint uh, in a deeper, much deeper level. Uh, and definitely that happens at some point. Uh, so Dan, in real life, and I, I realize there's a certain amount that I, I don't want to spoil. I'm not going to spoil the ending of it, I, but I have to. The premise is written right here. So you can't really hide from that unless you blind yourself to not looking at that. You know, don't don't look at that. But if you saw the trailer, if you saw it in theaters, obviously you already know what happens. But uh, this, I want to say, first of all, this is the least Disney film, least Disney-like film on, on Disney+, Plus. period. It's, there is no fantasy there's not even a passing reference to a Disney princess or anything else. It's a focus features touchstone film, so there's no requirement to have any kind of product placement for a, you know, an action figure or a princess or something. Excuse me. <coughs> no edits. So, uh, Dan is uh, taking his three daughters from New Jersey to Rhode Island to hang out with the family, to have a little family reunion. He and his two brothers, their wives, and mom and dad. One, his dad is played by John Mahoney. You know him as Fraser's dad. He's since passed. Rest in peace. And Diane Weist, which who I believe is still around. But uh, Diane Weist is his mom. So this is a stacked cast. And uh, speaking of stacked cast, we also have Dane Cook as his brother. I'm going to get back to him in a minute. But uh, Dan, while living the widower's life, still not completely over his wife being gone, she passed away of cancer, more than likely. Um, we don't go into a whole lot of detail on that. But along the, uh, along the way, no, not along the way, after he gets all the kids uh, off to grandma and grandpa, mom encourages him to get out of the house. <coughs> and he wanders into a local bookstore, just trying to clear his head. And, and uh, he runs into this beautiful young woman, played by Julianne Binoche, uh, European actress, if you haven't heard of her before. Um, gorgeous. Uh, she she plays Marie. Uh, runs into this beautiful woman. They connect almost instantly. Uh, 
in, in a way they even they aren't expecting. And they spend the afternoon just talking and talking, mostly him talking. And uh, But it turns out she's got a boyfriend. What he discovers soon after that is that her boyfriend is actually his brother, played by Dane Cook, Mitch. So Dane Cook, you know him from stand-up comedy and a lot, of, a lot more, say, bawdier comedy stuff. But this is his shot at doing, you know, this is still very much a comedy. Uh, there's lots of awkward moments. It's awkward comedy, which, uh, as Michael Scott on The Office, he has become the king of. Uh, and I'm going to get to The Office again. Remind me, I talk about The Office a little bit. There's a lot of strong Office connections in this. But Dane Cook is, excuse me, <coughs> uh, uh, no edits. <laughs> I'm not feeling well. So, uh, <laughs> So yeah, uh, when they see each other back at home, things get a little tense, a little awkward. Do they tell the truth? Do they deny their feelings? Because it's obvious, it, he, yeah, he obviously has a crush, but is, does she, is she interested in him, really? I mean, Dane Cook's a pretty hunky guy. And they met in his uh, gym, like they had a, he runs a gym, I guess he teaches aerobics or something. I don't know. He does. He's a trainer at a gym. And that's how he met her, uh, met Marie. And uh, so, yeah, he's, he was a physical specimen, you know, the hunky guy compared to Steve Carell, who's a little bit, you know, mousier and a little bit more reserved. And also, he's he's really not a guy who puts himself out there because, because of his pain, because of what he's dealing with. So the whole crux of the film is dealing with how or why or if they can make something happen or if they should at all lots of things come into play and uh there's a lot of a lot of moral <laughs> let's just say uh tension that you get from this because a lot of people right off no no you cannot hook up with your brother's girlfriend you cannot you can't do that no, no, I'm not saying he did, but I'm just saying you cannot go after your brother girlfriend, especially if they're dating. <clears throat> you can't fall in love with her, even no matter how much you love her. There's people who don't care about how things happened. It's just the ends, not the means. And then there's people who are like, well, there's certain justifications in some cases where I was expecting them to make Dane Cook kind of a bad guy. Maybe he'll just be a jerk to Marie and that'll give uh, Dan an opening to go, you know, you know, I shouldn't treat her like that. I'm better for her. Like maybe that could happen. Uh, in order for this to be an hour and 38 minute film, yeah, the, 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 there's a little bit of a pat resolution to this that kind of lets certain players, certain conundrums resolve themselves. <clears throat> At the same time, he is uh, trying to be a good father to his three daughters. His middle one, who is just hormones a poppin, she is. She gets her boyfriend to come visit them at their Redondo, uh, Redondo, <laughs> Rhode Island, Rhode Island uh, getaway. Like maybe it's Grandma and Grandpa's house. I don't know, I'm not sure, but. Um, what you know, and, and Dad's like, no, you can't. You've known this guy for three days or a week or whatever. You can't be in love. She's like, I'm in love. <clears throat> and Dad, you're a murderer of love. The older one, Allison Pill, she is much more observant to certain things, and the little one also a little bit observant to certain things. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it it creates it, it's this. I don't know if you have a large family. Uh, this will either be traumatic for you, uh, for like, like a family, uh, like a Thanksgiving dinner. I, I don't think it's Thanksgiving, uh, but it's definitely in the cooler months up in, uh, is, is there a hot period in Rhode Island? I don't know. Um, uh, but it's the Northeast, so it's a very, uh, rainy, dismal kind of time of year uh they're getting together and it's there's so many little components to the brothers and the brothers wives and all the kids and everything else and dan is trying to do his best to not be in love with her 
and not. And she, <coughs> excuse me, uh, <coughs> I don't feel good. Uh, <laughs> she also showing you some feelings. So how do you deal with that? And then, yeah, so to me, this is, this is, it was actually highly entertaining. I actually enjoyed this. I wasn't expecting a comedy romantic drama about a guy who falls in love with his brother's girlfriend to be entertaining. It, like I said, it does have a lot of that awkward humor components, like in The Office, as you would expect from Steve Carell kind of thing. Uh, not an anchor man uh, kind of character that he, he is also known for. This is over the top. He is very reserved in this, but you can see a little Michael Scott popping through here and there. Now, back to the office. There is a lot of, there's, well, not a lot, but there are some definite office connections to this. Uh, Michael Scott's lover uh, in the office uh, in his final seasons, played by Amy Ryan. Amy Ryan? Why, why, why am I freaking out? And Amy Ryan. Amy Ryan, she plays one of his brother's wives. So Amy Ryan was hanging out with Steve Carell well before they she they, she was added to the cast of The Office. So that's kind of neat. But in a moment where uh, they realize maybe the family decides, maybe Dan needs to just get out there and, you know, get some. But we'll set him up on a blind date with uh, this pig face girl that we haven't seen in years. They are mocking him in music. They're very talented family, by the way. There's an awful lot of family interaction. For again, like I said, if you have this kind of large family where you're always like playing games and you're always like I don't know, just putting on a talent show over a, like it's only they're there only three days, so it's kind of there's a lot packed into this weekend, I guess. <coughs> but one of the other connections, it's not super directly the office, but. They, they uh, set him up on a date with a lovely young woman, um, Pig Face Ruthie, who happens to be played by Emily Blunt, the future wife of Jim from The Office. Well, in real life, not. Why can't I say his name? You know who I'm talking about, Jim. <laughs> anyway, uh, so yeah, uh, Emily Blunt is connected to The Office in that way. So it's kind of neat uh, that that is a thing. Um, this is definitely not going to be a thing you're going to watch with your kids. Uh, no, no kid's going to find this interesting whatsoever. There's not a, a hook in this to go, oh my gosh, this is, the kids are going to just love that scene. No. Now this is, <clears throat> this is a rainy afternoon on the couch for somebody who is maybe going through the same thing that Dan is, or hoping for love, wanting a romantic uh, comedy with uh, really difficult choices with you want to do the right thing but sometimes is the wrong thing the right thing that's something they explore and uh, I'm not going to tell you one way or the other I'm not <laughs> I'm not the arbiter of that so uh, I, I think I, it's it's entertaining for adults it's not adult in any way but it is definitely parents or single parents who are, are dealing with this kind of thing whether it's dealing with their kids that are somewhat out of control and looking for someone who just might be the perfect person for them, but is out of reach. This is something that uh, will hit a few familiar notes for us adults. So, we've all been there, right? Yes. Let's pick tomorrow's episode. 339. <coughs> 339. I didn't want to cough while you were talking. Come on. 339. Keep going. Oh, I passed it. Okay. I don't know what this is, but it's fairly new to Disney+. Plus. Uh, it's a series, and uh, we're going to be watching Sumo Do? Sumo Don't. Yeah. We'll watch at least one episode. I think I'll get the gist of it. Uh, unless there's like a two-parter or something. But uh, Sumo Do and Sumo Don't. Sumo do, sumo don't. On the next Disney Plus Ready Challenge, see you tomorrow. Bye.